Hi, I'm Sean Reardon, Mayor of Newburyport, and welcome to the latest edition of the Mayor's Corner. It is another beautiful day in Newburyport, and it is hot. Like, I'm almost at the point where I've got to turn my AC on, and I've been trying not to, uh, but it is an absolutely beautiful day, and summer is definitely here. And we just had a weekend, uh, our 4th of July weekend, uh, that had a lot of things going on in and around the city. So first, I hope everyone had a fabulous weekend. Uh, my family, we were able to do a lot of really cool things. You know, we attended some of the events downtown here and listened to the music. We went on walks. We went on bike rides. We were out at the beach. Uh, it just really felt a like a nice, relaxing uh, few days. Uh, and again, it was our, our country's birthday, too, so we got to celebrate 4th of July as well. Uh, just a couple of quick shout outs for the weekend. Uh, Parks Fest was a great event that happened here on Saturday. Uh, we had uh, music throughout the day, so I want to give a huge shout out to the Parks Department for putting that uh, event together. Uh, we walked by actually early that morning with the family. We did a walk from Cashman all the way down to Joppa. Uh, but I saw the whole Parks Department out there, you know, working to get that event set up. And luckily the weather cooperated. It rained in the morning and then by, by lunchtime it had cleared. And then they thought another storm was coming in and then it didn't. And uh, it just turned out to be a great day. And I was uh, happy to be a part of it. I got to go down and introduce uh, the headliner uh, that night, um, that night or late afternoon. So it was really, really fun day downtown. So I was glad to see so many people out and about uh, enjoy enjoying our great city. Uh, we also had the army band that I got to listen to Tuesday night. Uh, the rain kind of held off for them as well. They were really fabulous on the waterfront. And then Monday we had uh, music there all day as well. So again, great job putting those things together. And it's always great when we can bring live music uh, into New Report. And it really just gets you fired up for what's coming, right? So we have Riverfest coming up in a couple of weeks on the 23rd, and then after that, we have Yankee Homecoming, and we'll have uh, live music in the city uh, pretty much every day during that week in a, in a lot of different locations. So stay tuned for that. But uh, really, it was just a, it felt like the, really the great first summer long weekend here in your report with uh, lots going on, so that was great. I've got some sad news to bring up today too. Um, you know, uh, rest in peace, uh, Bahama Bob. And for those of you who don't know Bahama Bob, you, you're probably fairly new to Newburyport because he was such a big part of the music scene here and in and around Newburyport for so many years. I mean, I can remember seeing him like when I was in high school playing at you know venues all around town. So I mean, you're talking the you know the past you know 30 to 40 years, uh, Bahama Bob. Uh, his real name is Robert Uzi. Uh, Erzy, I'm sorry, and uh, yeah, he just such very tragic. Um, you know, the, uh, apparently he drowned in the Merrimack, uh, so they're still trying to get information about that. But I mean, it, it's been really wonderful seeing the the tributes on on social media for for Bahama Bob. I have so many friends that have played with him over the years, and you know, him along with I would say Henry Welch, who passed away earlier this year. We've really lost two giants. Uh, in the music scene here in your report. So I guess, you know, my condolences to, to Bahama Bob's family, and I'm sure there'll be some, um, you know, tributes going out and, and some events coming up that can honor him because he was such a big part of the music scene here in your report. Uh, another event that I got to do last week that was really uh, cool and it kind of um, was special to me was I got to go to the change of command ceremony for our Coast Guard station. Uh, I think a lot of you probably remember I went. I got to go to my brother-in-law's change of command ceremony down in North Carolina. So we actually have those ceremonies every few years here in Newburyport. Uh, so uh, you know our Coast Guard station Merrimack is 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 our our local Coast Guard station here. Newburyport is the home of the Coast Guard, right? The birthplace of the Coast Guard, which is a a cool fact that I hope most of you know, and it's it's something that we try to highlight as much as we can because it is such a big part of our history. Uh, but the change of command uh, uh, command ceremony was last Friday and it was very cool. So um, outgoing Master Chief uh, Sean Crotton, he had been here for four years uh, as Master Chief here of the Coast Guard and he was retiring. So it's not like he was going to his next assignment, he was retiring. And a little different than the military I'm used to where it's every two years of change of command. This is every four years. So he really you know, was here for a good stretch of time and had a major impact. You're talking about going through COVID with the Coast Guard. Uh, you know, about four years ago, they went. There was a time where the Coast Guard wasn't getting paid, and I remember the community really coming together and rallying around the Coast Guard. So he really had to weather some pretty difficult storms, uh, as well as dealing with you know the unique challenges of the Coast Guard here on the Merrimack River. Um, so uh, again, he did a wonderful job. So coming in to take his place is someone that he actually knew really well, Master Chief Carlos Hessler. 
Uh, and I got to meet him on Friday. He seems like a really wonderful guy, him and his wife, uh, Heather, moved to the area. They're close by now. And uh, I think right off the bat, they had a search and rescue that they had to jump out in the boat and go towards right after the ceremony finished. So uh, there's no rest for the weary here on, at Coast Guard uh, Merrimack Station. But uh, welcome to Master Chief Carlos Hessler, and I look forward to working with him. It's gonna be a great relationship. What else is going on? We had a couple people, uh, promoted to our boards and commissions. They just got through a uh, city council meeting a few weeks ago. I just wanted to highlight them because they're having their first meetings coming up. Uh, we had Charles uh, Alavacetti, who I was able to appoint. He's a local lawyer here in town, uh, you know, young, young child, a child at home, new to Newburyport, but just wanted to get involved. Uh, he got appointed to the conservation committee, uh, a conservation committee, so CONCOM, and they had their first meeting last night. So congratulations, Charles. I, I got to uh, watch him get sworn in yesterday, and he got to jump into his first meeting last night. Uh, we also have Lynn Scow, who got appointed to the ZBA, uh, um, and so her first meeting will be next week, but we're going to get her uh, sworn in here in the next couple of days. Another lawyer, uh, just incredibly uh, involved in the community, incredibly bright, and so I'm just I'm so thankful that we were able to get her on this very important board. Uh, the ZBA. So congratulations, Lynn, and I can't wait for your first meeting next week. Some of the things that are happening around town, uh, our sidewalk plan is getting uh, vetted here at City Hall. So as you know, we, we finished the streets portion of our, our streets and sidewalks plan. We did 23 streets. It was incredibly efficient, and uh, we're really thrilled we were able to get that work done. But now we're working to that sidewalk por portion of the plan, okay? And, and again, this is a little bit more tricky because there are specific pockets of money we can use for sidewalks, okay? Uh, but we're gonna be limited each year. So, uh, you know, we're kind of talking internally about what kind of plan we can put together to help with these sidewalks in town. Um, and there's a lot of things that play into that. So I'll keep you posted in that and we'll, we'll again get things up immediately on the website when we, we do have some, some solid plans in place as far as which sidewalks we're gonna be able to do this year. Uh, I will tell you that we're targeting the streets that are on our plan next year and seeing which sidewalks need to be done on those streets and we're gonna be uh, targeting those first. But then there's also these areas around town that just need a sidewalk or just need some sidewalk improvements. So we're also looking at, at, at those areas in town and seeing what we can do this coming year. So again, stay tuned and we will keep you updated as far as which sidewalks we're gonna tackle this year. One of the, one of the fun things I wanted to bring up tonight, today that, um, it's not fun, but uh, first of all, I am a dog lover, okay? So I have uh, my dog Josie at home. She's a chocolate lab. She's, uh, she just turned seven years old. Um, so I love Josie, great dog. Uh, but I wanted people to know, and it's funny, this came up because we were going on a bike ride uh, along the rail trail this weekend, and someone had their dog off the leash, and I almost hit the dog. Uh, they were actually throwing the dog, <laughs> the dog a ball, like right around the, the Washington Street uh, area of the rail trail. And I stopped really quick and I got off my bike and I was, I was disappointed because I hope everyone knows that we have a leash law throughout the whole town of Newburyport, okay? There's actually only three places that you can go to have your dog off leash. And I know everyone thinks their dog's the best and everyone thinks their dog is the best trained, but it really is important that your dog stay on leash at all times. Um, I know my dog is always on the leash. Sometimes it gets out in front of my house and we immediately put it on a leash because I just you know, don't wanna take that chance. You know, there's people that have different comfort level with dogs. Um, you know, if a squirrel runs by, sometimes a dog, no matter how well it's trained, will, will bolt for it, right? So I just wanna keep my dog safe. And I think when you're utilizing public spaces in town, you know, no matter what size your dog is, you could have the tiniest little dog who would never hurt a flea to the biggest dog who is just the biggest cuddly dog that you've ever seen that you, you would think, no way that I would have to worry about my dog being off the leash. You still have to have it on the leash. So we do have a leash law throughout all of New Report. The three places you can go to take your dog off the leash and, and throw the ball or, or, or visit with other dogs, uh, Marches Hill is one of them, all right? And it's from dawn till dusk. As long as it's not winter and, and, and people are sledding there, your, your dogs can be off the leash there, okay? As long as you're um, comfortable with that. Uh, Cashman Park, uh, they have hours in the morning, so the very early morning, I think it's like seven to nine, and then in the, and then in the late, late afternoon, early evening, you can have your dog off the leash there, and that's right to the right of the playground and uh, the basketball and tennis court there at Cashman Park. It's a, a nice grass area there, and we're actually having some conversations internally about how we can even make that a better place for dogs as well, but uh, that's your place. And then the last place is Mosley Woods, which I grew up calling it Mosley Pines. They call it Mosley Woods now, but Mosley Pines, so down at the bottom of, of Spofford Street, 
Um, and then as long as you're not in the playground area, out in the woods there, you can have your, your dog off the leash from dawn till dusk, okay? So we do have some areas. It would be great if we had a, another dog park, maybe a fenced in area that dogs could go. Uh, and so hope maybe that's something that we can work on a little bit more this year. But right now we have three places in, in, in specific times where dogs can be off the leash. So again, this is just a friendly reminder for all you dog lovers like myself out there and my dog Josie, that we do have places that you can take your dog off a leash. But if they're not at those three places, then that dog should be on a leash, okay? Thank you, and back to, back to the, the, the news. Um, you know, again, I, I mentioned how hot it's getting. And again, New, uh, City Hall is in a drastic need of, of an HVAC uh, system upgrade because we just don't have one here. So we do have some portable units in some of the windows and I've, I've been hesitant to put on mine. Uh, I like having the windows open. I like having the breeze coming through. But if you're in a spot in town or like you, where you live, doesn't have AC and you're looking for a nice, uh, cool place to work, the library has some great spaces within it to get some work done, right? They have Wi-Fi, um, you know, it's quiet there. Uh, so if you are looking, if you're in a pinch and you need a, a place to go to get some work done and stay cool, the library I will recommend is a great spot for that. Uh, another like, you know, similar to the leash law that I wanted people to know about, another thing that people don't know about, and this is probably just an old, older time thing, right? When, like when you used to have yard sales uh, and you'd go up around town and you'd put your signs up telling everyone where your yard sale was. Well, actually they passed an ordinance a few years back that banned any of those signs from poles, right? And I think it's more just about, uh, you know, this beautification of our city, uh, right? Because a lot of times those signs can be left. Uh, it's, you know, it's advertising that someone's trying to use for free. So if you go around town and you see these signs put up, they're not supposed to be up there. So again, we're, I, I've instructed my DPS crew to be on the lookout for those signs because it's just not the best way to do it now. And plus, we have so many other ways to get the, 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 the word out there, right, about yard sales or, um, you know, events that are happening throughout the city, you know, utilize social media, that's, that's free. Uh, we have these like New Report um, free pickup yard sale uh, Comhurst sites that you can use on Facebook and other social media sites. So just, just so you know, when, when, you know before you, you nail something into a telephone pole or a public tree, just remember that, that that's, that's technically illegal and we're not doing that here in the city, right? So uh, if, you, if you need some suggestions on how to get the word out about the event or whatever you're trying to promote, you know, call my office. I'm, I'll be happy to talk to you and, and give you some ideas about how to do that. But we're really trying to remove the clutter, remove the trash, and remove uh, the signage unnecessary signage that's going up uh, around town, right? We just want to keep our, our, our streets clean, our city clean, and, and just help make it the most, you know, the best to report it can be. And finally, we are having another COVID uh, vaccine slash booster clinic at the Senior Center on July 14th, so next week. Uh, again, that's for ages three and up. You know, all the evidence is telling us that uh, boosters are doing the job. You know, we, we're about in the 40, 40 plus percentile um, for the city that has uh, received a booster shot. So we'd love to see that number go up. And now, you know, vaccines are available all the way down to three years old and uh, three years and older. Uh, so again, you just need to go on the health department website and the, there's certain slots you can sign up for. But if you've got nothing to do and you say, hey, I would love to get my COVID booster or vaccine today, sign up next week and we'll get to that booster or, or COVID shot for you. And that's my Mayor's Corner this week. I know there wasn't a ton going on. I know we've got so many good things coming up like Geeky Homecoming and Riverfest. So get excited, get outside, enjoy the weather. Um, again, I think we're in for a great July, all right? We just gotta keep it going. Uh, and again, if you're ever stuck in a corner, give me a call because the mayor's got your back. Okay, have a great week. Enjoy the beautiful weather and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.